The Miami Heat dominated the Sixers in Game 6 of the second round, advancing to the NBA's Final Four for the second time in three years. With Philly fighting for their season, after Butler misses this floater, watch how he out-hustles every Sixer on the floor, grabs the O board, and simply jab steps and sticks a dagger in Harden's face from the left corner. Out to finish their business from 2020's bubble, a year in Disneyland that's proving it can't be forgotten about, where Jimmy and Bam came up two wins short of winning the franchise's fourth title. The beastly 3 and D reigning champion PJ Tucker, a developed Adebayo and Tyler Hero, plus lethal complimentary scores like a deadly sniper in Max Struess and a former two-time All-Star in Victor Oladipo, have completed this Dade County attack. This video shows you the details behind why the 2022 playoff heat are unbeatable, and stay tuned to see why they're about to get even better for the conference finals. Before continuing, according to YouTube's analytics, only 11% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please leave a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and it makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. Lastly, stay updated on the NBA and the channel by following me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. After yesterday's video, where we broke down his 2022 playoff run, Jimmy Buckets lived up to that hype in Game 6, single-handedly ripping Sixer fans' soul out, forcing a lot of so-called fans of the process out of their seats with six-plus minutes to go in an elimination game that wasn't totally out of reach. I recommend you check out that Butler upload following this one, but today we'll go in-depth on the collectively beautiful spacing, ball, and player movement, along with the stacked roster of this Miami team as a whole, and we'll also get into what their Game 6 showing proved in the long run. Jimmy Butler had 32 in Game 6, but aside from him, we have to give credit to the length from the Heat's intimidating cast of players on the wing, like the off-season acquisition in P.J. Tucker, along with Caleb Martin, two outstanding wing defenders. But more importantly, it's the versatility from Bam Adebayo on the back end, which helps completely neutralize James Harden. Who would have thought at the beginning of the season that Max Struess would be outplaying James Harden in a Game 6, but that's what happened. Harden scored just 11 points in Game 6 total, zero of those points came in the second half, he shot just twice in the most crucial half of his career, and turned the ball over four times in total. With Harden's legacy on the line, the man failed to live up to expectations in the playoffs for yet another year, disappearing when the team that traded for him needed him to produce most. I expected this duel between two of our game's most popular stars to have never won a championship in Butler and Harden to be a lot more intriguing, but instead of a back and forth clash, we saw Jimmy prove to the world that he's the far better two-way player and that he could be the best player on planet Earth. Again, more on that in yesterday's video. Something that wasn't heavily broken down in that Jimmy video is the fact that he's not just an elite defender, but whether it was his time back in Chicago, the year a piece he spent in Minneapolis and Philly, or in the bubble, Butler's displayed time after the other that he's one of the best wing stoppers of anyone in the association. I thought it was necessary to take just a bit of time to analyze Jimmy's defensive prowess. What bodes well if you're a Heat fan is that as opposed to last year, when he only had a few weeks off after the bubble and looked extremely hurt, Jimmy's looking spry this year and at 100% full health. Far ahead of the pack in steals per game among active playoff performers, before entering the film room, here's a little taste of the mentality that Jimmy brings on the defensive end in a courtside interview back after Game 5. Game, game 6 Thursday, what is it going to take? Uh, us to continue to play basketball right way, us to get stopped and not rely on making shots. I promise you, if we don't give a damn about making shots and we just worry about defense, we will win. Jim Displaying outstanding IQ and instinctiveness, here, helping Lowry trap Trey Young at the top of the arc, this play shows off how much film Jimmy watches before a series, because in only a game one, you can tell he knows that Bogdan Bogdanovich is going to drive and kick to Trey Young, so Butler keeps half of his focus on the drive and the other half on an off-ball Trey Young, intercepting Bogdan's kick out like a safety in the NFL, unteachable wherewithal. Here he makes Gallinari's post-up attempt look silly, where in one motion, Butler pulls the chair and reaches in for a steal, knocking the ball loose and turning the Hawks over. 
His wingspan may not be as long as guys like Adebayo, but as you can see, Jimmy's back-end presence as well, along with his vocal leadership, significantly improves the Heat defense. Butler currently has the best roster around him that he's ever had, as this Miami squad is actually one of the deepest rosters assembled in recent memory. With the sixth man of the year in Tyler Hero, another all-star caliber bench guy who wasn't even in the rotation down the stretch of the regular season in Victor Oladipo, combining those options off the pine with what Jimmy, but more shockingly Max Struess and Gabe Vincent have done in the starting five, and that gives Miami an overwhelming amount of players with shot creation as their calling card. Having an abundance of high caliber offense manufacturers, guys who can beat their opponents off the bounce with a tight handle, and smoothly and calmly transition from that attack into either deep shots off the dribble or easy ones at the cup, is of course the most decisive factor in a team's chances to win a title outside of having a stable defense. We can't underestimate the presence of Bam Adebayo, who had an incredible block on Joel Embiid's jumper in Game 6, and is worsening his matchup's field goal percentage at one of the highest rates in 2022's playoffs. In a potential series with the team they were swept by in 2021, and one in five against back in the bubble in Milwaukee, Miami can make up for their slight defensive disadvantage in that matchup with their advanced play sets to get Butler involved offensively, and as I said, their abundance of capable shot creators. Following the Butler, Spolstra, and Haslam altercation, the team from South Beach has developed a loose yet productive energy and increased their team chemistry to 100%. The addition of P.J. Tucker was massive for the Heat's winning culture and two-way system with his perimeter clamps and corner three-point shooting. I'm just proud that there was a time Tucker competed for my Raptors, but after guarding the opponent's best player on his way to win a title in 2021, Tucker's out to go back-to-back -back in South Beach. Along with Adebayo, Tucker, Caleb Martin, and Jimmy, you can't forget about Coach Spo's tactical traps, his timely timeouts, and excellent substitutions, which have also been driving factors for the Heat owning the second-best defense in these playoffs. The presence of the journeyman recently turned stretch big and backup center in Dwayne Dedman has also been huge. Dedman's physicality and just the stable minutes that the nine-year pro gives Miami keeps one of our game's best five men in Adebayo extremely fresh. And considering Deadman played 65 regular season games, he deserves some credit for the success of the number one seed in the East. What's the scariest part about the Miami Heat? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free merchandise of their choosing this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Jose Andre Garcia, who says, so as a Miami Heat fan, I agree with all the comments. JB's best ability is his mentality and locker room presence, but everyone's saying that, so I want to throw something different, his adaptability. Make sure you pause to read the rest of Jose's tremendous take. Appreciate every single answer. I hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.